Before we get going with this week's show, a word from a few of our friends. Let's begin with Keeneland. In the fall meeting at Keeneland, race course is off and running. Get in on the action and wager with Keeneland Select. New accounts receive a special $100 back after you wager $200 on Keeneland Racing this October. If you wager a total of $300 in the first 30 days, you will earn another $100 back on top of that with the standard sign-up bonus. Sign up at KeenelandSelect.com. Keeneland Select mobile betting that gives back. Our friends out west at Santa Anita Park, a couple of contests for you to be aware of. $5,000 show viber is back. Playing Santa Anita's free online game, select one horse a day to compete for prize money across five different categories. Again, it's free over at SantaAnita.com slash contest the other contest. The $14,000 Santa Anita Pick'em. It is returned. It's an online contest that mixes popular sports props, including horse racing and football. It's offered every Saturday and Sunday, and you have a chance to win $1,000 per contest day. Both of these contests and more over at SantaAnita.com slash contest. And last but not least, our friends at BetMakers. Fixed odds betting powered by BetMakers is back and in effect at Monmouth Park, and the early returns are fantastic, with 70% of winners paying more on fixed odds than they are on the tote board. Fixed odds wagering is now available throughout the state of New Jersey. This is an exciting new way to bet that really puts the power to get value in your hands. The odds you bet are the odds you get. You will continue to hear more about fixed odds wagering opportunities across the In The Money Media Network. Now, on to this week's show. What's going on? Welcome to the Matt Bernier Show, part of the In The Money Media Network. My name is Matt Bernier. You can follow me on Twitter at Bernier underscore Matt. Today is Monday, October the 24th, 2022. It's episode 136 of the podcast. However you listen, thank you for doing so. Many ways to find the show, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, InTheMoneyPodcast.com. You can also watch and listen along over on YouTube. All you need to do, search bar, Matt Bernier Show. You will get this episode along with the 135 prior. As always, please rate, review, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, make sure the bell icon is lit up so you get notifications when new content is uploaded to the In The Money Media channel, whether it's this whether it's Horse Players Happy Hour, the finale is coming up on Thursday. We're down to a final table of 10, but we'll also run sort of a concurrent BCBC qualifier. Getting you ready. We are down to the nitty gritty. Less than two weeks away from the Breeders' Cup World Championships down there in Lexington. So we got all that going on. You can listen to the Players Pod. PTF and JK are putting out all sorts of videos. PTF's doing interviews with folks about different races for the Breeders' Cup leading in to next Friday and Saturday. So there's a million different things going on that you certainly want to be listening to, whether you're listening on any of the podcast feeds or you happen to listen or watch over on YouTube. Again, it's the In The Money Media channel, or the page, whatever you want to call it, over on YouTube. And that's where this show lives, aside from your traditional podcast areas. Uh, This week's show is going to be very light. And I mean light, light, light. Because there's only so many ways for me to discuss Breeders' Cup stuff without actually seeing the fields. I have an idea of what some of the fields look like, but I can't say anything yet. I believe pre-entries are announced in the next couple days, somewhere thereabouts, next few days. Um, You'll find out soon enough. I have an idea, but I can't really say much until that stuff happens. So uh, I'm not going to sit here and just kind of ramble on about the races. What I will say is next week's show, I head to Kentucky on Wednesday. So the final pod for this show will be next Monday leading into the Breeders' Cup. I will give some sort of some overarching feelings that I have about the two days, Friday and Saturday, acknowledging we won't have post draws, you know, uh, that sort of thing. And many things can change between when this show is recorded next Monday and Breeders' Cup Friday and Saturday. But I'll give you some ideas, some things that I'm looking at, even some ways that I'm probably going to attack the Breeders' Cup betting challenge. If you have not registered and you plan on betting gobs of money, you might as well do so. Head on over to breederscup.com. You can get the information there. Um, But more importantly, and this only works without your help, the listeners and the folks that watch along. We've done this in the past for the Breeders' Cup. We've done it in the past for the Kentucky Derby, for the Kentucky Oaks, for other races. I'd like a little bit of interaction here. I want to know three horses that you're keeping an eye on. A most likely winner, and yes, it's a bit of projection because we don't know what the odds are going to be because we don't have fields yet, officially. But give me a most likely winner in a Breeders' Cup race 
a vulnerable favorite in your opinion or a short price. Doesn't have to be the favorite. But let's say a horse that you think is going to take some money and a long shot that you think is live, that you think's got a big chance to outrun their odds, if not upset the entire thing in one of these 14 championship races. You need to send a clip over. And I'll even take audio, preferably video, just for the folks that watch on on YouTube. Doesn't make a difference really either way for the folks that listen, which is the vast majority of you. But point being, if you want to send just audio, feel free. I want no more than 30 seconds. Lean and mean, baby. Keep it tight. A most likely winner, a favorite that you're against or a short price that you're against, and a, a horse that you think is going to be a number that you think could do a little bit of running. Send those clips to me at bernier.matt89 at gmail.com. bernier.matt89 at gmail.com. And I'd like to have all of those in by Friday afternoon, this Friday afternoon. So that would be October 28th. Let's have them by, let's say, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific. October 28th, if you want to be involved, send over a video or an audio clip to bernier.matt89 at gmail.com. No more than 30 seconds. A most likely winner, a favorite or a short price you're against, and a horse that you think is going to be a bit of a number that you're looking forward to betting and doesn't even need necessarily be to win, but you think... Maybe they can hit the board. You're playing an exacta, trifecta, something like that. Maybe even a superfecta. And you think you can make some hay with that because I think this is the best opportunity and the best way, A, for you to get your opinion out there, but B, for myself and everyone else that listens to this thing to maybe consider, you know, oh, maybe I initially had overlooked this horse or didn't give them a second glance, but now so-and-so seems to like the horse. So why not? Maybe you just include for an extra few bucks underneath. Or if you're playing a pick four or a pick five or the pick six for a dollar either day, say, you know what, eh, for an extra whatever it may be, let's throw this one in because so-and-so likes him and made a good case for him. Those three horses, bernier.matt89 at gmail.com by Friday at 5 o'clock Eastern, Friday the 28th of October. We are we are down to it, folks. Breeders' Cup is right around the corner. Um, those of you who are, I mean, I'm by no means a workout aficionado, but if you're curious, because I think you, there are some things to glean. I'm not somebody who's out here, you know, selling workout reports or anything like that, because, well, we, we don't need to get into the, the workout report thing. But uh, XBTV, I think, is an absolutely, you know, invaluable kind of resource this time of year. I've made mention of it in the past, and it's just the one that sticks out to me the most. You always hear about the horses that are touting themselves. To me, the workouts are just as important, probably more so, for the horses that don't look great or aren't doing things the way that you'd like them to. And the example I've used in the past, and I'll never forget it, we're sitting there. I was still working at the Daily Racing Forum. Our guest last week, Dan Elman, two cubes down, beer split the two of us. And Mike was gone or he, or he wasn't in for the day, whatever it was. And we're sitting there and I'm watching workouts and Dortmund was running in the dirt mile that year. And he did something funny with his lead changes down the lane in the workout. And I, I yelled over to Ilma. I said, look at this. And he immediately said, it's a toss. Throw him out. Because he had never done it before. And sure, you can get in trouble with those sort of things. But I'm sticking to what's worked for me in the past, and you should stick to what's worked for you. I'm just throwing out something if you're new to kind of the workout game or you're familiar with some of these horses and you just want to see how they look coming into the biggest races of their lives. Uh, that was one example that it worked for us where we said, something's not working here. And I've already seen one tape of one horse that I don't love what I've seen, and it's enough for me to not pick the horse. And I was going to, right? It was at least among the contenders. By the way, if you hear you hear some noises in the background, I'm recording late on Monday, later anyway. It's about 10 after 6, and uh, the kid is upstairs. And it's almost, it's a combination of dinner time, and she's probably ready for her bath. So if you hear a little pterodactyl in the background, it's my baby. Um, point is, though, XBTV, I think it's a fantastic resource. Head on over there. Um, you can log in many different ways, but you can check out all the, the replays of the workouts, who they're working with. I think that's equally as important as anything to find out 
who have these trainers decided to put these other horses with? Again, preparing for the biggest race of their life. That can't be overstated, I don't think. Um, but those are just a few things for these final, I mean, shit, we're what? 12 days out from Breeders' Cup Saturday, 11 days out from Future Stars Friday. I mean, we, we got big stuff coming up. Um, like I said, I head out on Wednesday of next week. Thursday, we are not doing what we've done in the past, a, a betting the Breeders' Cup show. It's going to be individual race sort of appetite bite-sized previews. We're going to go through all 14 races. We're going to throw out some of the other things that we've done in the past with betting the Breeders' Cup, where it'll live. I'm sure it'll be a combination of Breeders' Cup social channels as well as NBC Sports social channels and whatever else it may be. But that's what we've got going on on Thursday. And then Friday, we're going to be on for all the Breeders' Cup races. Saturday, the broadcast starts after the first two Breeders' Cup races have come and gone. The Philly and Mare Sprint and the Turf Sprint. Those other two races, I believe you'll be able to catch somewhere else. But internationally, those will be going out. Uh, but we absolutely start at 1 o'clock on Saturday and bring you right through the Classic, wrapping things up in the dusk down in Lexington at Keeneland Racecourse. Very excited. It's my favorite two days of the year by far. There is nothing close to the, this lead-up and the event itself, um, not just because of the betting opportunities, which are fantastic, but because of the best of the best on a proper stage and at a proper venue. Granted, all the Breeders' Cup venues are proper but there's something poetic about going back to keeneland where most of these horses in lexington are, were born somewhere you know within what 15 miles 10 miles of the racetrack what does it mean for this week's show though speaking of keeneland uh, we're gonna go over the all turf pick three on friday again i don't i don't really go over multi-race sequences too often unless i think there's good opportunity to be had keep in mind it's a three dollar base bet it's races five eight and ten on friday at keeneland the 28th of october so as you're handicapping and you're getting ready to watch this race kick off or the, the sequence kick off make sure you send in your stuff over to me bernier.matt89 at gmail.com your 30 second clip for the breeders cup show next monday so i have plenty of time to get it to producer craig he can put it all together package it up nice and pretty and we get it out to you sometime next monday night somewhere thereabouts Sound like a plan? All right, let's do it. The all-turf pick three at Keeneland on Friday, races five, eight, and ten. Let's get going. Leg two, it's race number eight. It's a graded stake on the turf, a mile and a sixteenth for three-year-old fillies. It is the Valley View. Um, think of it, I would typically say for the three-year-olds that weren't good enough to run in the QE2 last weekend. However, the horse that I picked and bet in the QE2 my good friend California Angel, she's back in the entries. She's drawn down on the inside. I thought she ran really well in that spot. I hate that she doesn't change leads all the time. That bothers me greatly, and I don't know what that is. I don't think it's a physical thing, because she's been... Although, to be fair, she was gone from March to September. So maybe it is a physical thing. Uh, but she kicks. She got a proper kick. And she fits really well in here. Now, maybe the turnaround is going to be too quick. I don't... I don't think it's going to be, though. Um, I, I think she's entirely logical. The problem is she's going to be a fraction of the 12 to 1 that she was against grade 1 company. At least that's my estimation. She is one of two main plays in here. If I had to make a top pick, I don't think she would be the top pick, despite the fact that I love her. Um, let's get to the backup before we get to the top pick. The backup is Oakhurst. First time for Michelle Nev Nevin's barn used to be trained by Chad, is cross-centered at Aqueduct on Friday. So there's a chance that this horse doesn't even run in this spot. I haven't read anything. I don't know either way. Maybe the news is already out there. Oakhurst stopped pretty badly in the Virginia Oaks at the beginning of September. The thing that gives me reason to believe maybe there is something here is because her best race to date from a fig standpoint, she's run it two times. 88 buyers, once in the Saratoga Oaks at Saratoga. Two starts back. The other time was in a victory over N1X Company at Keeneland in the, in the spring. So she likes Keeneland. The distance is right up her alley. And I think she's probably going to get the pace that she needs to really come with a late kick. Now, if she doesn't run here, then we just don't go with the, with the backup. Um, I will acknowledge, and this goes back to what I said at the top, the idea of not being afraid of being wrong. Um, maybe some would say this is dumb. 
I just think she's going to be over bet. I'm throwing Dolce Zell out. She can win, absolutely. Would not surprise me at all if Chad won with a rat aboard. Uh, I'm just not using her. I, I, I don't want her as an A, and I'm not going to use her defensively. This ticket is too small um, for me to be worried about that sort of thing. And I'm still going to bet the horses that I think are going to be the ones that offer value. And I just don't think she's going to. I don't think she's going to offer value in multis. I don't think she's going to offer value from the win standpoint. But we'll find out. My main play and my pick in here is Majestic Glory, the six for Todd and Luis Saez. Excuse me. Now, she may not offer a great deal of value, but comparatively speaking, her versus Dolce Zell, I think she has as good, if not a better chance of winning this race. She's going to get a much better setup than she got in the Pebbles in that most recent start up at Aqueduct. There was no pace signed on that day. The winner went wire to wire, faith in humanity. The runner-up, Gina Romantica, came back and won that QE2 Cup at Keeneland a couple weekends ago. I think Majestic Glory is a quality filly. She came over here. That was her first time in the States. She's been here for a bit. She's been at Keeneland for a little while. I'm expecting a forward move here. She's going to get the setup that she needs. And I'm if she doesn't kick, I'll be disappointed. Maybe she doesn't win. But if she's not firing at the very end and threatening, I'll be extremely disappointed, especially with the way Todd's barn is going. So my, my pick, air quote pick in here, would be the six Majestic Glory. She's one of two mains that I'm going to use in the Valley View, along with the one California Angel. My only backup in this race is going to be the three Oakhurst, assuming she runs in this spot. If she doesn't, we just throw it out and we only go with two mains, and hopefully we're alive to the payoff leg. Now here's the only downside to the pick three at Keeneland on Friday, the all-turf pick three. Payoff leg is race number 10. It's an allowance race, quality horses, five and a half furlongs. Ugh. The uh, well-documented bane of my existence, turf sprints. Uh, but nature of the beast, got to gotta deal with them sometimes. And that's exactly what we've got here. It's a very competitive group as well. I'm using five horses in all, three A's and two backups. The A's are the five, the six, the ten. The backups are the one and the four. Let's begin with the A's. The five, out of door would be my air quotes pick in here. Uh, fun fact, Outer Door was my pick and my bet in the 2020 Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Bet him at 9-1. to one, Gave me a bit of a thrill. He flattened out down the lane. He has had a start and stop career since then. He has missed extreme amounts of time periodically. Um, it looks like Wesley Ward's got him at least back together and hopefully getting back to Keeneland is going to be to his liking. He is picking up Joel Rosario here. Uh, and I'd expect him to be within a few lengths of the early pace. So I, I think Out of Door has a big chance in this spot. Uh, the six, Mark of the Z, goes out for Jose Rodriguez, owned and trained by Jose Rodriguez, previously trained by Fernando Bahena. This horse loves Keeneland, two for two at Keeneland. The distance is right up his alley. Uh, his most recent start I thought was great at Keeneland. He won by more than two lengths. E.T. Baird retains the mount. Uh, the third place finisher came back and earned an 81 from the 83 that that horse earned on October 7th. The 8th place finisher moved up from a 55 to a 70. So I think that, you know, low 90 is kind of where this horse lives at Keeneland going 5 eighths or 5.5, I should say, on the weeds. Mark of the Z, I think, is a must-use in a spot like this because I don't think he's going to be the favorite, and I think he's got a big chance. And the other A would be, and maybe I'm chasing here. You know, I picked him when we did the, uh, the Kentucky Downs broadcast a, a few weeks ago. Uh, totally boss likes Keeneland as well. This distance is right up his alley. I don't know what happened at Kentucky Downs. He didn't run particularly well. Um, the pace did hold up for for a bit in there. Um, Artemis City Limits, who I believe came back and replicated that 100 buyer that he earned in the turf sprint from Kentucky Downs uh, last time out at Keeneland. You know, I, Totally Boss is still one of those horses that I know his best can win a race like this. And I don't think he's going to be among the favorites and I want to use him. So he is one of my three main plays in here. My backups are going to be down toward the inside. The one Bob's Edge, who I think is a little sneaky in here. If I really wanted to, I could move him over to a main. Um, when we go over the tickets, I'll, I'll explain why I didn't. But second off the bench, you'll note that the last time he went second off the bench happened to be a run at 5 8 at Keeneland, a winning effort with an 89 buyer. Um you know, I guess just draw a line through the Kentucky Downs race. Maybe it was too tough. Maybe it was the odd turf course. It was his first time on grass in almost a year. Uh, I think he moves forward here. 
for Larry Jones, and the other backup is Boldor. Goes out for Steve Asmussen. Uh, most recently, won a Virginia Bread Stakes race down at Colonial, going five and a half. Uh, the fig stacks up well. The second place finisher came back and replicated the 89 buyer that he earned that day at Colonial. Um, yeah, I just think Boldor is a. Truth be told, I could use all five of these in some fashion as mains. Uh, but again, depending on your budget, and I want to at least be, I want to be cognizant of that both from a listener's perspective, but also me practice what you preach now i'm going to be putting in a little bit more for a pick three sequence than i normally would but keep in mind this is in a three dollar denomination not a one dollar or fifty cent so if i've done my math correctly and please check me if i've done something incorrect for the three legs races five eight and ten at keeneland on friday for the all turf pick three i have a main and two backups in the first leg Two mains and a backup in the second leg, and then three mains and two backups in the third leg. When you write out the tickets, nine with one six with five six ten, that comes out to eighteen dollars for a three dollar play. Nine with three with five six ten comes out to a nine dollar play. Nine with one six with one four comes out to a twelve dollar play, and then three eleven with one six with five six ten comes out to thirty six dollars for a three dollar play. All in, that's a seventy five dollar play. For this all turf pick three at Keeneland, it's a great wager. Uh, if you agree with the opinions, great. Let me know beneath the comment section over on YouTube. Those of you that listen, head on over there. You can check out the the video if you want. Nothing spectacular this week. I just got a hat on, uh, but it's a good spot for you to leave opinions and comments and thoughts. Oh, he's an idiot with this pick. Oh, this one is spot on. He's brilliant. Well, anywhere in between. But let me know. Maybe you didn't consider one of these horses. Now maybe you are. Or maybe you had already looked at them and said, no, Matt, you're making a mistake. You shouldn't be using that. Let me know. I'm curious. We still have days before the sequence goes off. So maybe my opinion can be swayed. Maybe I add a horse. Maybe I take a horse off. Who knows? The beauty of this thing you have right up until they break from the gates to make your decisions. That's what I'm looking at as of Monday afternoon for the all-turf pick three at Keeneland on Friday, October the 28th. Uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, if you want to be involved with this year's uh, Breeders' Cup show, Breeders' Cup edition of this program, uh, you need to send in your 30-second audio or video clip to bernier.matt89 at gmail.com by Friday at 5 o'clock Eastern. Uh, basically, as this pick three sequence is ongoing, that way there's time for me to turn it around and send it over to producer Craig. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to do it whether there's two submissions or 20 submissions. If there's 200, we may have a problem, Craig, but... Um, you know, we in the past, we've had anywhere between 15, and I think the most we've had is just under 30. That was for a derby. Um, if we can get close to 15 again, I'll be happy. That'll give you guys plenty of, of opinions to hear, different voices. And if you've been anxious to try to get your opinion out there, this is, you know, no, maybe this isn't national television, but in the money media, we've got a decent little following, a decent little uh, listenership. So it's a good way if you are dipping a toe and you want to get your public opinion out there or opinion out in public, however you want to say it, this is a good way to do so. Uh, again, bernier.matt89 at gmail.com, a 30-second audio or video clip, a favorite or a short price that you like, a favorite or a short price that you don't like, and a price that you think will outrun their odds and possibly even win whatever Breeders' Cup race they're running in. That's what next Monday's show is going to be about. Uh, I'll also, again, throw out a couple of opinions here and there as we get ready for it. This is it, guys. Nitty gritty. Start doing your homework if you haven't already. Uh, and then join myself and PTF on Thursday for the Horse Players Happy Hour Tour, the Horse Players Happy Hour Finale, the playoffs, wrapping it up, the final table of 10. The winner will earn a $10,000 BCBC seat and will also be running a concurrent contest where you can buy your way in for $179 for the chance at a Breeders' Cup betting challenge seat. And keep in mind, the VIG, the juice, the takeout, it goes to charity to help TRF and TAA. So uh, all for good, and who knows? If you get lucky, it'd be good for you as well. So you can get yourself a $10,000 entry into the big one in a couple weeks. Uh, that's going to do it for the show. Again, thank you however you listen, however you watch. Um, follow me on Twitter, at Bernie or underscore Matt. We've got horse racing. Uh, put up that uh, column over on NBCSportsEdge.com every Friday. We've got hockey. We've got Premier League action. We're going to start having some videos, all sorts of other stuff. 
yeah, that's going to wrap it up. I got to go catch up on the finale of Game of Thrones before the Patriots bash the Bears' brains in. I say that. I mean, if they don't win by at least 10 tonight, I'm going to be pissed. Because this is, uh, this is a classic, classic spot. Belichick against the young quarterback who's already a little bit shaky to begin with. Um, yeah, he's got great legs. But if you make him throw the ball, I think it could be a long time. Years. I digress. Uh, until next week, best of luck however you play, whatever you play, and wherever you play. Join us for happy hour on Thursday. This has been episode 136.